do not measure the power of our God by what the enemy does. We measure the power of our God by who he is and what he has done in our lives. And with the understanding that he does more than we could even imagine or even ask. Amen. So tonight we are going to have a great time. That which she conceives is of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We take that from Matthew chapter one, verse uh, 20. Uh, I was sitting in a service uh, over the holidays and a uh, person by the name of Elder uh, Raphael, Elder Raphael Thomas began to read and suddenly that scripture just came out to me as I was sitting there and listening. And I realized, you know, so many times as women, even to remind ourselves, we have forgotten who our God is, but, uh, that and and who we are because we are marginalized in many spaces but thank god tonight that which he, that which we conceive is of the holy spirit so welcome again to uh this final session of uh our four-part series on that which she conceived we thank you all for taking the time out of your evening to join us Lord, praise the Lord. God is good all the time, and all the time our God Father is good. Is good. Amen. God Amen. bless you, uh, Reverend Sharon, for inviting me to share the gift of God on my life with your ministry and all the people of God that have joined us tonight. I'm going to talk about the Shunammite woman, and this story is found in Second Kings chapter four, verse. 8 to 37 and chapter 8 from verse 1 to 6. This woman is a Jewish woman, as we all know, very influential, and she stayed in Shunem. Shunem was a village located in the territory of Issachar. Her house was located in the path of a busy route for travelers from Nazareth to Jerusalem. Her house was one of the places travelers came and the office stopped by, got some rest. She gave them, you know, some drink, food, and then later on they continued their journey. One day she told her husband that she sensed, she perceived that one of the travelers who stopped at her house was a holy man of God. She suggested to her husband that they should make him a fully furnished world room house on top of their house so that that man of God can stay whenever he comes by. Lo and behold, the idea came into fruition and the house was built. This man of God's name was Elisha. Elisha came into this house with his servant. In the house, the generosity and the kindness of this woman was moved Elisha so much that he wanted to do something for this woman. I need to bless this woman. She was asked by the man of God if she needed anything. She said, no. Elisha's servant, as time went on, realized that this woman was only there with her husband. And so it was a good thing for her to have a son. Elisha agreed to that. And he prophesied that this woman was going to have a son. Again, the Lord did it. This woman had a son. But along the line, one day, as the son was in the fields with his, with his father, she felt, he felt ill. And so they rushed him to the house. His mom held him and, died, and he died in the arms of his mom. This woman didn't say anything, didn't talk to anybody. She just grabbed the son straight to the room of Elisha and laid the boy on Elisha's bed. She didn't waste time. She saddled a donkey with one of her servants, not talking to anybody on the road. They just rode straight 
to the Mount of Carmel, where Elisha was seeking the face of God. As they rode, Elisha saw her from afar and recognized that it was the Shunammite woman. Yes. He was wondering what was going on. And so immediately Elisha sent his servant, Gehazi. He said, go and find out what is going on with this woman. Lo and behold, Gehazi got over there and asked the woman what was going on. All the woman could say, it is well. Oh, yes. She continued her, her journey and followed on she wanted to speak to Elisha. She was able to, get, I mean, come to the place and they both met. And she told Elisha, my son is there. Elisha had a direction from God. He said, Gehazi, get my rod. Rush quickly to the house and put this rod on the sun. Gehazi followed instructions from his master, but nothing happened. So again, he came back to Elisha and said, nothing happened, Elisha. So Elisha himself and the woman, they all rode to the house. When Elisha got to the house, hallelujah, he didn't talk to anybody. He just went straight to his room. Bible said he laid himself on the wall, mouth to mouth, hands to hands, body to body. And lo and behold, as he prayed, something happened. And we all know that the power of God, there's no way the power of God will move for somebody. The resurrection power of God will by all means bring the dead to life. This boy was brought to life and was given to the mother. That didn't end the story of this Shunammite woman. The second part of her story was found in 2 Kings 8 verse 1 to 6. Elisha told her, Woman, there's going to be seven years of farming. So I want you and your family to move to the city, uh, to the city of the Philistines and stay there till the farming is over. This woman obeyed every word that Elijah told her. Elisha told him, sorry. She went. Yes, the farming was over. She came back to her land. But what happened? Squatters have, been, have come to take her land. She was so bold. She said, I'm going to claim my thing in the name of Jesus. She went to meet the king of Israel. While she was there, when she got there, it so happened that El Elisha's servant, Gehazi, was narrating the miraculous story, the miraculous uh, story of how she gave birth and the fact that when her son died, he was brought back to life. And Gehazi said, King, this is the woman I'm talking about. The king's face just went straight to her and said, woman, is that true? The woman said, yes, it is true. And do we know what happened? This king restored her land back to her, hallelujah, and everything that she missed on the land. The Bible said she was restored and every proceed that she should have received for all those seven years was given to her. So reflecting on the story, what did this, what, what did she conceive? What is the conception here? She conceived a personal relationship with her God. This started with an idea God placed in her heart. Now, sometimes we think the ideas that God places in our heart is just for, you know, when we are praying or we are fasting, or we are studying God's word. But I'm here to tell you that the Lord uses so many avenues to speak to us, to put an idea into our spirit, for us to conceive those ideas. It Amen. comes through dreams, visions. Sometimes we might be in our corporate meetings. The Lord will drop a word in our hearts. It might be with our friends, our peers, our social groups, church family, even in the classroom, lecture time. Yes. Conferences, the Lord can drop an idea into our spirits yes. and we will conceive. Hallelujah. Yes. The Bible says she perceived that this was a holy man of God. This woman knows her God. She obeys the commandment of God. God made her see the need of Elisha. 
Elisha has been going back and forth to Carmel. This man really needs a, a place close by to stay so that his journey can be shortened so that he can see the face of God for his nation. God told this woman, because this woman has a relationship with God, God told her that she has to do something for this man. God told her to get that house. And lo and behold, that house was got on top of the roof and Elisha was in there. Have you or somebody been in a situation where you have prayed several times unto the Lord for something and the Lord guides you to maybe make a phone call to a particular person or somebody calls you or he says, go and check this website and lo and behold, there is the, the answer is there for you. If all these people didn't have a relationship with the Lord, how will we have received such miracles in our life? or such instant message from our prophets, from our pastors, from our friends. Beloved, the presence of God, knowing and having fellowship with the Lord is important. So all of us here, this is what the spirit of God is asking us. How is our relationship with Jesus? Are we making time or part of our 24 hours a day for him? Or have we just put him on the back burner and just go and grab him on Sundays. Or when we need him to do something for us because we are so tight, we need some help. The Shunammite woman knows the Lord, knows her God. And that is why she was a blessing in the life of Elisha. If she hadn't had that fellowship and relationship with her God, she wouldn't have had that. So what are we saying? It is so important. The Lord is calling us into fellowship and relationship with him. David said in Psalm 61, 63 verse 1, Early will I seek you. My soul thirsted for you. My flesh longed for you in a dry and thirsty land. The Lord is calling all of us into a relationship, a consistent. It's not today I'll do it, tomorrow I'll not do it. Consistent prayer, consistent word study, meditating on God's word, listening to his voice, being guided by him. This is where the Lord is leading us. That's the conception that this woman had, her relationship with the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. She maintained her faith and composure. When she, her son died, this woman had known her God. And so she trusts her God. She's obedient to her God. And I believe that she knows God will come through for her. She knows the man of God, the anointing on the man of God, something that will be surely a performance in the name of Jesus. She understood spiritual principles. Do we know why? Because when her son died, hallelujah, she didn't just start crying. She took the son and put the son on the bed, hallelujah. And she knows something will happen. If she maintained her faith, she didn't talk to anybody. Remember, she didn't talk to anybody on the way. Hallelujah. God is good in the life of this woman. Bible says she did everything that Elijah told her. Now, when, when we, we conceive the conception, that's a blessing that follows conception. Every prophecy the Lord has given to us, every idea, Everything he has placed in our spirit. Beloved, there is a blessing for us and there is a blessing for others. And so that is why it is so important that we come into fellowship with him so yes. we can get the proper direction yes. so that this conception, there will be a birth in yes. the mighty name of Jesus. Yes. Matthew 10, 41 says, he that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive a prophet's reward. Hebrews 6, 10 says, God is not unjust to forget your work and labor of love. You have shown in his name, instead you have ministered to the saints. The other thing she also had, she conceived a ministry of, of hospitality. Hospitality. This woman went above and beyond. She fellowship with her God, she listened to her God, and that ministry was birth. That was Elisha in her home. She served this man of God, hallelujah, from the depths of her heart. 
and God blessed her with her son. God raised her son from the dead. Beloved, we saw how her land was given back to her in the name of Jesus. The Lord wants to do the same for us. Our blessings are handed. Why? Because we don't take time to seek his face. Why? Because we don't take time to fellowship with him. Why? He's been calling us. He's been calling us when we run around everywhere and, and, and we're just giving just the surplus of our time. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hebrews, Hebrews 13 too. Be not forgetful to entertain strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels and our works. Some of us, we have been obedient to this ministry. Never have my ministry. The Spirit of God wants me to tell you that keep doing what you are doing because you your blessing is there. That is how you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. Some of you, the Lord have told you what to do in this ministry and you just want confirmation. <laughs> I'm here to give that confirmation to you in the name of Jesus. Keep doing what the Lord has told you to do because guess what? When you serve the man of God, when you receive a prophet, you will receive a prophet's reward. Your blessing is there. Beloved, receive it in the name of Jesus. The Holy Spirit wants me to tell you again. Then we close. He said, some of us are comparing ourselves with others. He has given us the gift of help. A lot of us, we are doing great things with because Lord, the Lord God has given us maybe adoption ministry, he's given us maybe foster parenting, he's given us so many ministries of help. But because we want to be in the limelight, because we want to be seen, and we have told him, ah, Lord, I don't think I want this. I want to be a prophet, rather. I want to be a minister, rather. I can't do The Spirit of God wants me to tell his people who are watching right now that, hey, in the name of Jesus, we should not, we should not compare ourselves. When we compare ourselves with one another, the Bible says we are fools. We should not. We should not. Bible says in 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 29, that hospitality is a ministry of help. Just as pastors, apostles, evangelists, and even people in government, let me tell you, people of God, sometimes we think because we are not apostles, we are not pastors, we are not prophets, then when God has given us um, businesses, he's given us corporations, he's given us organizations, we think those things are not, are not ministry. I'm here to tell you the Bible said it in 1 Corinthians 12, 28 to 30, that God has called people to be in government. That is the business sector. That is the financial sector. Everything that we do, that is not so directly in the house of God. God has called you. Open your heart and release the anointing in the name of Jesus. Romans 12, 6 to 8. The Bible says, he that giveth, let him do it with simplicity. So that means... All that the Lord has called us to do, beloved, we have to do it in simplicity, with love, with love. Hospitality is a great ministry that the Lord is talking to us about today. He acknowledges that ministry. So don't throw that ministry away in the name of Jesus. Those of you who have pushed the Lord back, ah, secretary, please go back. Go back and repent. And the Lord is going to do what he has to do in your life. We are going to pray. We are going to use three minutes to pray. We are going to pray an effective prayer. The Bible says in Mark eleven twenty four, 24, whatsoever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive and you shall have it. Those of us on this platform, if you are blessed to be able to pray in the spirit, pray in the spirit, we want results. If you are not, you can pray with your understanding so that we can pray. Our first prayer is going to be, we are going to say, Father, forgive us. Those of you who have pushed God away, he has called you 
into an intimate relationship. He has called you into a fellowship and we keep pushing him away. We are going to pray for forgiveness. And just like David, we're going to say, Father, in the name of Jesus, we hunger for the things of you. We desire to come back to you. We want to be consistent in the name of Jesus. Lord, I want everybody to open and mute yourself and pray. And mute yourself and pray right now. In the name of Jesus, shall we pray? the Bible says godly but godliness with contentment is great gain from first Timothy 6 and with look we don't need to compare ourselves we are going to pray that oh God please Forgive us if we are comparing ourselves. Take yes, away pride from us yes, and help yes. us to receive every ministry that you are giving to us. We should not say because it's not a prophet, I don't want it, Father. It's because it's not a pastor, I don't want it. No, that the God will give us a, a, a heart of surrender today. That from today, we will go to the Lord and say, Lord, we are content. Choose us, shall we pray. Makandele basuka tayanda la baba, rabe kabanda la basande le bebe katayande. I want to hear everybody pray in the name of Jesus. Father, we just want to hear you, God. We don't want to compare ourselves to Father. Pray for the name of Jesus. We are calling and blessing. Father, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, please, please forgive us. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank we Lord. give you glory. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of we don't want to compare ourselves with people. Our next prayer yeah, topic, which yeah, is the last yeah, prayer topic, yeah. is going to be the further open opportunities for us to be able to, to, to minister to others in this hospitality uh, ministry. And then we are going to ask the Lord that, no, let's pray about this first. God should open doors and opportunities for us to serve. That is one of this ministry. We, there's contributions that need to be made. God help us to, to, to be a blessing to people. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We give you glory. We ask that you help us. That we serve in the name of Jesus. Open up the doors and all opportunities of God to serve you, oh God. To serve you, oh God. Lord, you have told all of us to be hospitable to strangers. Last we entertain strangers and our ways. We want to thank you, Jehovah. We want to bless you, Jehovah, in the name of Jesus. Our love, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Beloved, and some people are not having their relationship with the Lord and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Jesus, 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 Jesus. God will not send somebody to call you to God give you specific you directions about what you are going to do. Here and Today, God to go to the is store. telling you that we you see. are the same person he's going Hallelujah. to use to be a blessing to somebody. So he wants you back into that relationship so you can hear from him and you can go straight to the person he wants you to bless. We are going to pray that God, you're going to say, Father, thank you me. I yield myself to you so that you can show me exactly where to go to be a blessing to that person. Shall we pray? 
tonight we thank god for those thank who you, are Jesus. guests tonight and those who have been here the other weeks we just want to welcome you tonight and thank god for you being on the platform tonight amen, amen. amen. so tonight we're going to talk amen. about deborah and her story can be found in judges chapter four deborah is the only female judge that was mentioned in the scriptures she was the wife of lapidoth she was a prophetess and a fee, which is a female prophet or the wife of a prophet. So in those days, as it is today, a prophet is a person who speaks for God by his divine inspiration and authority. Prophets have keen spiritual insight and they can see and reveal the future. They are what the Bible calls seers, amen. So Deborah led and judged Israel at that time and she was sharing the word of the Lord with others. She was a woman of influence, a woman of prominence, and she was a prophetic voice in her time. She was a woman of confidence, confident in who she was, and she was confident in what she was called to do. She didn't let her gender stop her from fulfilling her calling, and neither should we, amen? Amen. amen. The Israelites did evil in the sight amen. of the Lord, after King Ehud's death. What? And as I was reading this passage, this is the thought that came to me. The Israelites did evil in the sight of the Lord after King Ehud's death. And here it is. Why do some people always seem to do evil after somebody dies? That's when people want to act up. That's when the ugly wants to come uh... out. I don't know why that is, but that's, that's what happens a lot of times. Amen. And the Lord turned... <laughs> The, the, the Lord turned the Israelites over to King Jabin of Hazor, who was a Canaanite king. The command of his army was named Sisera, and Sisera ruthlessly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. So the people of Israel, as they always do and as we do when we get in trouble, they cried out to the Lord, and the Lord used Judge Deborah to give them his answer. So Judge Deborah sat and she held court under her palm tree, which was called the Palm of Deborah. And the people of Israel went to her in matters of justice. So one day Deborah sent for Barak, who was the leader of Israel at that time. And she spoke to him and this is what she conceived. She conceived the word of God. She prophesied and she birthed what thus saith the Lord to him. She told him to go to Mount Tabor call out Zebulun, Naphtali, and 10,000 warriors. And after Barak received the word of the Lord from Judge Deborah, he told Deborah that if she goes, he'll go, but if not, he won't go. And I said, after the Lord told you to go, Barak, that's what you're going, that's what you're going to do? You're going to tell the Lord, well, if she don't go, I'm not going to go. No, you got to follow instructions. Amen. Amen. So, Barak may have been shy and restrained in responding like that. Perhaps he was, or he may have made that decision because Deborah was seen as a mediator between God and man. Or maybe he didn't trust Deborah and what she said, and he wanted her to come with him just to be sure that she was telling the truth. Amen. At any rate, because of his response to the prophetic word, Deborah agreed to go. But she told Barak that the Lord would give him the victory by a woman's hand. Ultimately, 
the Lord led Sisera, his chariots and warriors to the Kishon River. And so Barak, Zebulun, Naphtali, 10,000 men, and one female military leader, a woman of faith, fairness, wisdom, and obedience. And that was Judge Deborah. She also went. And just as she prophesied it at the Kishon River, Deborah told Barak to charge because God had already given him the victory and was marching before them. The Lord threw Sisera, his chariots, and his host into a panic. And Barak and his army wiped out all of Sisera's warriors. And old Sisera, he jumped out of his chariot and escaped on foot, and he ran to the tent of Jael, who was the wife of Heber. And Heber's family was supposedly on friendly terms with King Jabin. Jael told, told Sisera, you know, don't be afraid, come on in. She let him in the tent, and she covered him with a rug. And how many know we got to be careful which friend we run to in desperate situations? So-called friends might take advantage of you in your time of need. Luke hey. 21, 16 says, you will be betrayed even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. Lord have mercy. So Cicero asked for some water but JL gave him curdled milk or cream or spoiled milk, and it's called Leban in East Jerusalem. She gave it to him in a lordly bowl. So she got out her good dishes and gave him some curdled milk. She pulled out that good dish and gave it to him, and she covered him up, as I said, with the rug. And the curdled milk or cream that she gave him is thought to be a fermented variety, and thus it had an intoxicating, inebriating effect. So Cicero told her, as he was drinking this concoction, he told her to stand watching the door of the tent. And if anyone came inquiring if a man was there, that she should say no. And poor Cicero, bless his heart. After he drank that, that, that leaven, he was exhausted and spoiled milk wasted, and he fell asleep. <laughs> and J.L. then drove a tent peg into his temples while he was sleeping. So deep did she draw that tent peg into his temples that it fastened into the ground and he died. My God, as Barak pursued, JL came out of the tent and told her she would show him who he was looking for, Sisera, who lay dead. And God subdued King Jabin before the children of Israel. The hand of the children of Israel prospered and prevailed against King Jabin until he was destroyed. And afterwards, in, in Judges chapter 5, we see that Deborah and Barak then sang a song of praise and victory. Amen. So let us pray. Father, we ask you tonight, God, to touch the women of God that are on the line tonight. Father, help us, Lord, that we would stand up and be counted. God, that we would be women of influence in your kingdom, that we would be women of prominence in your kingdom. Lord, cause us to prophesy and to be prophetic voices. Give us the confidence that we need to carry out what you've called us to do, Lord, that we would not let our gender or people's criticism of our gender stop us from doing your work. Lord, Use us to speak the word to your people and to give them your answers. Oh God, help us to speak boldly and courageously and help us to be still discerning in times of desperation that we won't make bad decisions. Oh God, and each time we do your will, may we like Deborah and Barak sing songs of praise and victory unto you who are worthy of all the glory worthy of all the honor and worthy of all the praise in Jesus name. Amen. God bless you. Amen. Hallelujah. 
We bless the name of the Lord God Almighty. Amen. Today, I'm going to be talking about Rahab. Rahab is an unlikely ally. Amen. Amen. It so happens that she was the first woman or the first person who was a non-Jew to form an alliance with Israel for telling us about the grace of God that brings people, no matter your background, into his fold because he is God and he can do what he pleases. Amen. Today, my scripture will be taken from um, Joshua chapter 2, verse 9 to 13. It, and I read, it says, And she said unto the man, I know that the Lord had given you the land, and that your terror has fallen upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea. And when he came out of Egypt, when you came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side of the Jordan, Sihon and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as, I, as soon as we heard of these things, our hearts did melt. Neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in the heaven above and the earth below. And now, therefore, I pray you, swear unto me by the Lord, since I have showed you kindness, that you will show kindness unto my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father, my mother, my brethren, my sisters, and all that they have and deliver our lives from death. Who was Rahab? If you go to the book of Matthew chapter one, down in verse five, down in that genealogy of Jesus Christ, Rahab's name is mentioned just before another one who found the grace of God, who's, who also was adopted into the kingdom of God. Beloved, Rahab was known, was a known prophet. Her, in Jewish culture, her name was, um, um, the reference that is used in the Jewish um, terms for her was Isha Zona, which means prostitute woman. What is a prostitute doing in the lineage of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ? It is because this woman sat and conceived that if I align myself with this God who has put fear through the spines of everyone that his people has encountered, my destiny will change. Hallelujah. It is only God who is able to change the destiny of a person. So let me tell you a little bit about Rachel, uh, Re Rahab. She was a Canaanite woman who lived in Jericho. The Canaanites were sworn enemies of Israel. Her home stood in the way of Israel's promise, and she knew with God they were coming down. It was going to happen because this God has not failed yet. He was a God who led his people as he had promised to, and she had heard it all. Amen. She understood the times in which she lived. Like I said, she is a sex worker, a whore. She sold her body. Her family owned a tavern, according to the, um, to the information that I am um, research that I did. She literally owned a tavern, they owned a tavern. And that was where she performed her job. That's one of the places. And by all standards, her home was a fortress. You know, the Bible says that the arm of flesh will fail you. And um, if Rahab had been someone, she would have trusted in the magnificence of um, the city of Jericho. Even though, it, because it was a built fortress, I, I researched and found out that tractor trailers could go on the wall because of how wide it was. It was about 30 feet wide. That wall alone where Rahab lived was about 30 feet wide. It was a thick wall. It was a fortress, but she knew that the arm of flesh would fail. She understood the time. Now, Jericho had a God. It's not like they didn't have a God. In those days, they worshiped idols because they were not Israel, of course. So they worshiped 
Israel. One of the gods that they worshiped was Yarako. Yarako was um, um, the moon god. And they also served these fertility gods. And for them, worship was selling your body. Everything that the Bible says we should not do in the book of Leviticus chapter 18 and 20 about sexual relationships, have sleeping around and all that stuff. That is what this thing demanded. That is what this God required. Sexual orgies were the order of the day and they were indiscriminate about it. They could do it whenever they wanted and however they wanted it. And it was not an issue. They didn't care about God because they were not Israel. They were not the people of God. They had their own God. And Rahab belonged to this culture. She belonged to these people whose God gave them free access, free license to do whatever you do, pleasure themselves. And so for her, being a sex worker was literally uh, a, a form of worship for her God. But the moment she heard about the God of Israel, hallelujah. She heard about the God of Israel and she conceived in her spirit that if I can align myself with this God, whatever the case, this fortress is coming down. If this God is who he is, if he was able to open the Red Sea, if as they said he did, literally we are coming down. And so let me think about a way to save my people. The Bible says that Joshua had sent spies to these people. And when Joshua sent the spies, Literally, fear came upon the people. They, already, they were already afraid. As soon as they knew that spies had gone to Rahab, they decided, you know what, let's go find them. But because Rahab had conceived that this God can help me, this God is my license, is my destiny changer. He is the one who can turn my situation around. I don't like this life anymore. I want this God. Beloved, have you been in a place where you are so stuck that you need to change things around. Rahab conceived that. She saw that it was the time for her to turn things around. And the only way out, her ticket out of that life was God, was the Lord, the God of Israel. So Rahab, she decided that, you know what? I'm gonna follow God. And then she hit this man. Lo and behold, the king came. The king sent men. How on earth do you defy a king you know has the power to destroy you physically, whose kingdom you live under so that you can submit to a king that you don't know? The only thing that will make a man do that is if it's a higher power. Hallelujah. Rahab acknowledged that this God of Israel it's a big God. He is God. He is the God that I want to go with. And so he defi she defies her king. A lot of people look at her. If you look at everything we've described about Rahab right now, she's a prostitute. She's a liar. She's everything that the Bible talks against. Hallelujah. And yet God accepted her. Beloved, she showed us how deep the love of God can be. When a man turns away, when we come before God, she conceived in her spirit that this God is my way out. When a man comes to God, he does not turn him away. God never turns anyone away. No matter how deep you are buried in sin, no matter how high you, you think you are, your status means nothing to God's love except the fact that he loves you. And he is willing to accept us. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm used to hearing amens in the background. I know everybody just needs to say yeah. Amen, amen. Amen. It tells me that there's somebody there. Amen. amen. Hallelujah. So beloved, she knew who she was worshiping. She knew who she was serving. Her God was Yarakah. It was doing all kinds of things. She was tired Man. of that. There was no more, no more, no more that kind of life. And so she committed to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. She committed to the God of Israel. The Bible says that as many as received him to them in John chapter one, verse 12, it says, as many as received him to them, he gave the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. Amen. This is where she came to. The scripture in John had not been written, but she conceived the mind of God. Beloved, 
God is able to do exceedingly abundantly above what we can think or even imagine. She realized that this is my way out. Are you stuck in a place and you need a way out? I want to assure you that this God does not turn anyone away. Amen. Our God just does not turn anyone away. Amen. He just can't because his love is too deep. He was able to grab his son and tell him, go to Calvary and shed your blood for Amen. my own, just to purchase more unto myself. Rahab conceived that long before. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And today, tucked in in the genealogy of Jesus Christ, her name appears because she formed an alliance with God. Where are you right now? I know most of us here already have an alliance with God, but my other question to you is that, how strong is that alliance? How committed is that alliance? At any given time in our lives, we can renew our love to God. We can renew our strength to God. And that is what way of She turned around and gave herself to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Beloved, I am here to announce to you that this God that we serve, He's more than able. Your situation is not desperate as you think it is because God is bigger than your situation. Amen. Hallelujah. She Amen. chose a God she did not know over a God she knew just because she heard the word. She heard the word. The rumor mill was in her home. If it was a tavern, that's where everybody, you know, um, loose tongues talk, right? When men get drunk, when women get drunk, that's what we do. <laughs> we literally, you know, like talk. So her home was the rumor mill. And she had heard that this God is able. Have you Amen. thought about the fact that God is able? Mm. Daughter of God, I want to assure you of one thing. She realized that my God, the God of the Israelites, is God above all. Beloved. Let us continue. We have come to the right place. If Rahab had everything, she would live in a fortress. She had money. She could, her job was easy. I mean, she didn't need to buy anything. All she needed was herself. <laughs> and she was there. Hallelujah. Amen. Maybe a few perfumes here and there, but she had money. She could do that. Yeah. But she was there. That was all she, she didn't need. Any resource. Her life was set. If anything happened, they would protect her because she was in the fortress, but she knew that was coming up. So she made a promise to God. She went to these people and said, please make me a promise. Please, please make me a promise. Amen. I hit them, protected them and sent them out and said, make me a promise. Is that when you come, beloved, this is where it matters the most. She was the first person to acknowledge like Jesus said, when a man is saved, you will be saved together with his household. She was not just thinking about herself. Mm -hmm. Have you thought about the people in your home? Have you thought about their salvation at any point in time? This is Rahab for you. When she had the opportunity, she said, don't just save me. Save my mother. Save my father. Save my brothers. Save my sisters. And everybody who is with me, save them. Don't just Amen. save me. Save everybody. Because everybody deserves to be saved. I know your God will destroy this land. But I want you to know, don't just save me. Save my family. Amen. Have you thought about your family? Beloved, if you have not thought about your family, I want you to understand that there is an opportunity for you to think about your family. From today, like Rahab did, don't just think about your salvation and be satisfied. I'm saved, I'm blessed, I'm dancing in the Holy Ghost. That's not it all. What about your brother? What about your sister? What about all the people that God has brought into your way? Beloved, I want you to know one thing. Rahab called for her family to be saved as well. And lo and behold, you all know the story. I don't want to bore you with that. When the walls came down, that red scarlet representing the saving blood, the color of the blood, that red Man. scarlet hanging that window. And everybody who was in that home was saved. The Amen. Bible says that as many as will call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. She called on the name of the Lord and all of them in her household were saved. Beloved, salvation is key. Rahab showed us that no matter where you're coming from, God can accept you. And it wasn't just her. Her family was baptized into Israel. They were adopted 
into Israel's culture. Beloved, this is what the love of God is about. Wherever you've been, if you made a mistake yesterday, you made a mistake the day before, whatever it is, the blood of Calvary, the blood of Jesus still flows on Calvary. Thank God that this access is not through wars anymore because it's all being paid for. If you were here Amen. and your relationship with Jesus Christ is not as it ought to be, look at Rahab, that woman of God, that prostitute, the woman of God who saved her household and begin to walk towards the salvation. Beloved, I want you to know one thing, that God is able to do all that he said he would do concerning you. He's not a judge sitting there telling you, giving you do's and don'ts. That's not who he is. If you understand the love of God, it envelops, it wraps Amen. around, it saves, it delivers, it restores, Amen. it cleanses. Amen. Hallelujah. This is the love of God. And mm. Rahab conceived that long before the blood was shed on Calvary. Beloved, think about your family. Think about everybody God has brought into your, family, your household. She conceived that God is able to save not just her, but everybody she brings. And Amen. she brought many. How many are you bringing with you to heaven? Or when the saints go marching in, how many people are you coming with? How many people are you going to be walking down with and dancing in the Holy Ghost with when we are going there? Beloved, it's not for you alone. I want you to know one thing. God is able to save Amen. everybody. Everybody and anybody, whatever you've done in the past, does not matter to him because the blood is powerful enough to cleanse it. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. For the next couple of minutes, I want us to pray. I want you to talk about, to pray for yourself. Lift up your voice and lift your relationship with God before him and talk to him as your father. He is your father, you know. And for those of you who do not know Jesus as your Lord and personal savior, I want, I would give you the opportunity to come before him so you can talk to him as a father, as a, a child will talk to a father. Some of you, your fathers are not, are not a good example to you because they have touched you in ways that they should not have touched you and they have broken you more. But I want to assure you that this God restored Rahab. This God, this father is the one who cleanses us and makes us whole. So you have come to the right father. He said, though your father may forsake you, God will keep you, he will accept you. He doesn't let turn anyone away. If you don't know Jesus, first of all, while those who are praying, who those who know the Lord are praying and talking to their father, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and personal savior, I want you to, um, I mean, say this, pray with me. I want you to dedicate your life to God. In your own words, dedicate your life to God. Say, Jesus, I come to you. I give my life to you. I want to walk with you. Help me, Holy Spirit, to be who you want me to be. From today, I renounce my old life. I join forces like way up did. I ally form an alliance with you, Jesus Christ. And I come before you in the name of Jesus Christ. Save me, cleanse me, and make me whole so that I can walk with you in the name of Jesus. Pray, call on God, every one of us. If you can unmute yourself and pray, that's fine. I love to hear people pray. Open, open up to God, unmute yourself and talk to God. Father, God, your love, let them see your love than ever before. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Pray one more time. I want you to pray for yourself that you will not fail. You will not fail as a Christian. When the curtains close and your eyes are closed and you take the last breath, you will make it to heaven. It is the most important part about this walk. Beloved, if we don't, what will be the essence? We've stood here, bound demons and 
cursed things and broken things and done things. And then we end up in their midst. Pray the Lord, I will not help me not to fail. I want to make heaven. Yes. I want to make yes. heaven. be with you yes. in the name yes. of Jesus. Yes. Yes. yes, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. we thank you for who you are and for all that you continue to do father you are our father we call you abba father father everything oh god that stands in our way oh god we lift it before you oh, as you clear the enemies of, of Israel, Jesus, oh God. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you clear everything that stands in our way, the way of the promise. As you create everything that stood in the way of the promise of Israel, Lord, clear every everything that is standing in the way. Every obstacle in the name of Jesus Christ by the fire of the Holy Ghost, by the nations and the fire of the Holy Ghost, in the name of Jesus Christ, will be in the presence of the Lord. Bound. I pray that the chains be broken oh, in, the in the name of Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit of the living God. In the name of yes, in the name of Jesus. Yes. Take us, Jesus. 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 Take us, J
was the daughter of Caleb. So you're probably more familiar with Caleb, right? Caleb went up with the 12 spies and he and Joshua were the only two that came back with a report that said that we are well able to go up and take the land. And at that time, Caleb was a man of a certain age, right? He was up there in years in his seventies and yet he had this testimony, yes, I can go up and take the land. I sometimes imagine what kind of 70 year old Caleb was, what was he doing to stay that strong? But this is not about his story. Another thing that you may not know is that Caleb is the grandson of Judah. And so just a little genealogy there. And if you know anything about Judah, he was the fourth uh, son for his father and he was, uh, not really perceived well, but when they needed him to go up against what is translated in English as the lowdown to battle, the Bible says, send Judah first. And of course, we know Judah means praise also. And so you send praise in, uh, in the front of the battle, all through scriptures, you see where when persons were about to go to battle or, or the Israel was about to go to battle. They sent the minstrels, the psalmist, the, 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 the choir in front of those that were going. So um, send Judah first. And so Aksa, the daughter of Caleb, she is coming from a great line of people, right? A great grandfather, uh, Judah, um, her father is Caleb, and um, and she's just got throughout her family this these interesting characters. But each time you look at the story of Aksa, which you can find in Judges chapter one, verse twelve through sixteen, is a great place to start, and you can even find her mention in Joshua chapter fifteen. Uh, I think verse 19. So I'm not going to read her story because that's going to take away from my time, but um, you can read it. I'm going to summarize it for you. And I'm starting my clock now. So I know how long I have, so I don't get in trouble for speaking too long. But, um, and so, uh, so I'm going to summarize her story. And so there is a, just imagine this, there is an, we, we're seeing war now. So there is an eight-year battle going on, right? The Lord promised Caleb um, through what he has done through the spies that this land is his. And that land include the famous city of Hebron, right? Hebron will later become the uh, city, the main uh, city for David. In fact, Hebron was called the city of David later on. But here we are and... Um, Caleb is promised this land. And so he went up, he's well able, and he fought battles to ensure that and the inhabitants of the land were destroyed or displaced so that he could have the land that God gave him. But there was a stronghold in the middle of everything. And the stronghold was in Hebron. And so here he is fighting this eight year battle with this particularly difficult group of people and he just could not get them move. And imagine he was 75, I believe when he start fighting and it may take it a couple of years to clear the land. And now they're in this eight year battle. And in my imagination, this is not Bible, my imagination, he is getting old, it's eight years later. He's in his eighties or close to his nineties. And this particular stubborn group of people, this stubborn situation is not moving. So this is what he said. He said, look, anybody that is able to go up and conquer Ebron, I am going to give you my choicest possession. And that's my daughter, Aksa. I will give you to her as a wife. You will be a part of my family, you know, and we will forever be grateful. Coming with Aksa is land that I will apportion onto you. And so her story, 
um, from our vantage point in history seems particularly odd because she is just chattel. She is just something that is the possession of her father. In fact, she had three brothers. He didn't say, you know, I've got three boys. Any woman go up and fight Hebron and conquer it. You can get them a husband. No, she is chattel, which we find oftentimes in history, women are on the, are marginalized and put in spaces where it may seem that they will not be able to affect or effect history. But tonight I'm here to tell you that's not true. Each of us are fearfully and wonderfully made and God has an expected plan for your life. So I don't know what situation that you are sitting in and you may feel that you're not being able to move forward because there is patriarchy as we discussed over the past weeks or there is just something that's holding you. But I assure you that if you just turn your face to the Lord, he will show you that you are valuable and you are needed in his kingdom. Amen. And so Aksa, here she is going to be rationed off to whomever fights and conquers Hebron. The interesting thing about her story is that, and I need to talk a little faster, is that her cousin, uh, his name was Othniel, right? Othniel, he loved Aksa. And at that time, there was no issue between marriages of cousins. Amen. That's how a lot of us came here. And so there it is. Othniel loved Aksa and he decided that he was going to go up to battle. Now, Othniel's, the meaning of his name is Lion of God, or some translation says his name, his name means God is strength. And so he goes up and he fights this battle, this eight-year war that was raging. He took this group of men and he fought, and lo and behold, he won Hebron, and therefore he won the right to marry Axel. And so, as I said before, Axa came with a wonderful dowry of land, and, um, and so they were happy with that, and they got married, and they went off. But as she started to consider all that was happening, again, my imagination kicks in because a few chapters before that, we see a group of women being mentioned in the Bible that is familiar to a lot of people. They're called the daughters of Zelophehad. And the daughters of Zelophehad did something amazing. They caused the law to be changed concerning women. And because of their boldness in approaching all those who are in charge and say, look, our father died in his own sin. And what he did has nothing to do with us. We have no brother, we have no husband. And so we need a part of the inheritance. And so when the elders considered it, they said, yes, is it true? You are a part of the inheritance of God. So are you tonight sitting in your chairs at home, wherever you are, you are a part of the inheritance of God. You're not just good enough for women's ministry. You're not just good enough to teach children. You're not just good enough to teach young adults or other women. You are a part of the inheritance of God. And when God spoke you into existence, he, was, he had you in mind to be a leader just like any other person that he made. Amen. So Aksa was home and she was with her husband and she considered and she remembered what the daughters of Zalafa had did and she considered how the land was a portion and she recognized that she was an inheritor because in uh, uh, Numbers chapter 14, verse 24, there was a pronouncement on her father, Caleb, that says that all of his 
uh, descendants will be inheritors. And she did not exclude herself. So she recognized she and Othniel were going to produce children and people and generations who will need access or a place of safety. And you see, that's one of the things that Aksa did. She thought generationally. She didn't just think about her present circumstance or what was going on with her in mind. What she thought about was who is coming behind her. Tonight, I wanna encourage you to think about those who are coming behind you. They may be your biological children. They may be your adopted to children by certain standards, whatever that be, they may be your spiritual children, but you need to think generationally because the thing that you do today and the way you pray today will affect your tomorrow. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I, I think that was a great amen moment there for me. Amen. Amen. Know who that you need uh, to be to, to what you need to do. In fact, Amen. I mean, Amen. Uh, is a type <laughs> of prayer that AXA is. Uh, she's not just one who conceives something. And remember the definition that we gave for conceive. You have to be be able to apprehend the thing, to understand the thing, to be at the beginning of the thing, to originate the thing, to be even pregnant with a thing. You can be pregnant with an idea. You can be pregnant with a thought. You can be pregnant with what the generation Amen. need, and you need that to move forward. You need yes. it to be conceived in the now. And so AXA conceived in the now when she began to talk. She had an order to things. I got two minutes. She has an order to things. And see, we have to have an order to things. The Bible says that we can come boldly to the throne of grace. And to uh, when we come boldly to the throne of grace, we will receive mercy in time of need. And so there is an order to things. And so Axa decided to orderly first go to Othniel and say, look, have you considered that we need this space for the generations? And the Bible says, Athniel did not want to go to his father, Caleb, his, his father-in-law, Caleb. And so my imagination kicks in again. And I said, why? Why is it that he wouldn't want to go? He is, he is uh, the lion of God, the strength of God. He has conquered a city and drive out the unholy inhabitants. He was the one, he was a freedom fighter. Why was he uh, so hesitant to speak to his father-in-law? And I believe that the answer lies in the meaning of Caleb's name. His name has been translated as the dog. Right. And that means that it's an indicator that he was rough. And that's why he probably was such a fighter, even at such an older age, because he was rough. I remember when uh, I, there was going to be a change in the church, in the Catholic church, and they named one of the popes God's Rottweiler. That's how bold he was. He was a dog for the kingdom. And that's how uh, Caleb was. He was a dog for the kingdom, for the things of God. So he was rough. And though Othniel was strong, he didn't want to create the waves that was necessary to cause the release for the generations to come. That's why God put women in the lives of Amen. men because we know how to birth that which we are pregnant with. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You have value Amen. to conceive. Glory. Amen. Glory. And so Othniel did not want to go up against uh, his, his father-in-law. So she did, Axa did what was orderly. And oh my goodness, this says my time is up. And as the owner, I'm going to take my other three minutes of prayer and just continue <laughs> the story. But if I, <laughs> if Go on. Do it, Go on. but if 
if you think about this, so she did the order and then uh, so she, after she spoke, she got on her uh, ride and she went to her father and she saw her father even on the donkey and what she did. She didn't just ride up to him and say, you know, daddy, I just want this and that. The Bible says she honored him by getting off her ride and making sure that she approached him respectfully. Sometimes Amen. We are stuck Amen. In him. We are strong women and we're strong in our spot and we know we are right. We approach Amen. with the wrong kind of attitude. But when you approach with respect, you there there is a saying Amen. that flies with honey oh. and vinegar. Amen. Amen. So she approached with sweetness and respect, giving yep. respect to her father, what she needs. When we approach the throne of grace, we have to approach with respect. Amen. Give God the necessary Glory. due that is due unto him, the respect yes. that is due unto Amen. him that I'm rushing through. And so she approached him with respect and she asked him for the fields and he loved her so much. He said, yes, the fields are yours. There is nothing in the story that indicated that he even has hesitated to give her what she asked for. And there is nothing in our story that God hesitates to give you what you asked for. When you approach the father, and the Bible says his promises and are yea and, and amen. And amen. 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 So he gave her what she asked for, but because she was thinking generationally, because she knew what was required, because she had conceived a place in mind for her and her descendants, she said, Daddy, the land you gave me, it don't have any water in it. It is dry. We can't cultivate. We can't grow anything. We can't do anything with it. So you know what, daddy? Give me the upper springs. And while you're at it, give me the lower springs also. Give me what comes from heaven and give me give what, me what earth comes can from provide. Earth. Yes. 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 Go back to daddy, think about what you need and say, daddy, I need something from heaven and I Glory. need the yes, Lord. To, produce, to give me the water that I can do what I need to do in the earth run for you. Glory. Lord, have mercy. Don't hold yourself back. Own your ambitions. Don't hide your light under a bushel. Mm. Hallelujah. Come on, that's right. Wrong in your spot. Amen. Mm. Many, Amen. Many they said that she was greedy. They said that she was gravelicious. Mm. They said that she was rebellious because she's out of order. But tonight, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I know mm. that there's when they say this about you and I recognizing AXA that she was orderly and because of what she conceived, yes. hallelujah, her husband could be the first judge in Ooh. Israel. Hey. And the Bible says that for yes. 40 years, he had peace. He hmm. was known as the first judge of Israel. My so God. he that yeah. had strength required the jewel who is yes. to go and conceive and yes. Yes. what was necessary yes. for the generations to be watered. Yes. Yes. Lord have mercy. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. So we have to think about our situations when we approach God. Understand yeah. what you need. Go orderly and in respect. Go in worship. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Worship. And then Hallelujah. When you have, make sure that what you're given, you don't just say, well, you know, in Jamaica, we say, you know, it's so, so, so. No, it's not so, so, so. Just go back. If it's not fully what you need, say, daddy, I need the water. 
I needed hey, to hallelujah. Work. I needed to produce. I needed to do this. I needed to do that. I Amen. needed this to be watered for my children. I yes. needed this to be watered so the generational the, the generational curse cannot be there. Yes. I need this to yes. water so that we don't have giants in the land. I need yes. this to be watered so hallelujah. that the will not stay i need this to be watered so that it does yes. not become yes i need this to be watered so that my great 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 grandchildren Ooh, hallelujah that they can lift and call upon the name of the Amen. lord i need this to be watered yes hallelujah yes. Yes. thank you jesus so axa came from a lineage of courage she wow, came hallelujah. from a lineage of fighters. It is interesting mm -hmm. to me that Axa has three brothers. You don't hear about them. <laughs> Isn't it funny that you may be the daughter in your family and daddy, our natural father, mm -hmm. may look to the sons. But yeah. in truth, you are the one that is carrying what is oh, necessary. Oh, my God. Oh, the family to move yeah. forward. My God. Mm. I don't know to whom I'm speaking tonight, mm. but that is what I believe the Lord is saying to you, that you can conceive an, a, an oasis for your family. It is yeah. possible. <laughs> I wish this is, this is a, a one of those sermons that can be two hours. So we got a few minutes Amen. here to pray. And so we are going to pray, but I leave that with you. And as I was thinking about this, and um, these are not my prayer points, but I thought that they were so uh, uh, interesting mm -hmm. and, and necessary and appropriate for today. Uh, and, and, and now you will see why my, my stuff kept disappearing because the, the, they didn't want me to talk about this. A lot of us women, we have callings and we negate our callings. What if Axa had negated her calling? She was called to conceive an oasis. We are specifically designed to bring forth. We are designed mm -hmm. for ministry, whether we're ministering to home, family, or work. We're designed mm -hmm. to be used when things are not moving properly. Yeah. When life is being attacked by disappointments, frustration and mm. division. We are designed to be in the way and have the capacity when signs and wonders completely elude oh, the yeah. family. When you're unable to focus your attention on what God expects you to do we are designed to break through that and bring forth oh i won't even Amen. talk about when we, we abort things Amen. oh no 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 we won't go there tonight the bible says mm. in second timothy 4 verse 5 watch thou in all things endure mm -hmm. afflictions and do the work of the ministry and make yeah. full proof of it. We are designed to do that. So tonight, uh, eternal God and Father, we destroy the power of every satanic uh, force that is in our lives in the name of Jesus. Anything that is meant to arrest our lives we destroy it by the in power the name of the of Holy Jesus. Spirit, Holy Father, God, yes, Lord. and work that has come against us, whether they're two-footed or ethereal. God, we lift up a stand of you, a standard of mm. your word. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, mm. your word. Yes, hallelujah. Nothing, uh, will be able to separate nothing. us from your love. Yes. Nothing that will come, nothing in the name of Jesus. You who love us, us from your you. word says that yes. we are in Hallelujah. Amen. So tonight, God, we destroy everything that in represents Jesus. a demonic world in our lives. We destroy in the name of Jesus. We 
pray that the naysayers in our lives, that their words will come to naught. In, in Jesus, the name of Jesus those Christ. Those who will preach sermons. Jesus, Jesus. When they go to speak negatively, God, that like you did with the man oh, from Saul, that they Jesus, will begin to trust our goodness and our love. We pray, God, that our families will be released into a wealthy place, into a place that we conceived. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch us. Renew our strength. Renew our strength. Holy Spirit, open our eyes to show Hallelujah. beyond the visible. Yes, Lord. May we not see dry land. May we not see dry land. May we not see dry land. But may we see the wellspring coming up, oh God, from the oh lower regions, well the upper regions. Father, see. as Genesis was watered Ye by the you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. our lives be yes. watered by you tonight. Amen. Father, Hallelujah. So that have fertile and fruitful ground in the name of Jesus. In the name, in the name of, of Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. May we not see with the natural Ooh. eyes, but may we Hallelujah. see with the spirit like the prophet yes. said, may we recognize that there yes. are greater and more within us and with us yes. than yes. those who are out there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let every wickedness that is constructed against uh, that which we conceive be demolished. Jesus. Jesus. And may the Sambias and Tobias, uh, the Sambias and, and Tobias of our lives, when they begin to bring a report, uh, Father, I pray that your angels will lift up a standard fire is poured yes, in Lord. their presence uh, so they know not to touch uh, your anointed and do not touch uh, your vessels that bear honor. Amen. 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 Oh. Jesus. And if our Hallelujah. blessings have been taken, mm, my God. we recall them now in the, in the name, name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ooh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Any Hallelujah. spirit controlling you, that Jesus. which is ours, yes. mm. we tell you right now Jesus. to let it go. Mm. Let it Bring go. It yes. Put yes. it down in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. In your name. In your name. In your name, Jesus. Declare with our mouths that there is nothing impossible with mm, you. We're God. We're God. Nothing. Oh God, you are rede our redeemer. You are the one that translated us from the kingdom of darkness uh, into the kingdom of light. Yes, yes. You yes. prepared a way for us in the wilderness. Uh, mm. You prepared yes. rivers for my places. You, Jesus. oh God, caused the sun not to smite us by yes, day yes, and Lord. we will not hallelujah the moon by night oh you my God. are our thank you Lord. thank you Lord. The guide and so we praise well, you tonight in the name we of Jesus. your name holy Ooh, your Lord. name Jesus. amen holy are you lord hallelujah How in your name hallelujah Jesus. your name is awesome and mighty Yes. Let fall upon your daughters. Your Give name. Your name. Is your name. <laughs> Hallelujah. The nation. Hallelujah to do. Father, like Deborah, may we be full of wisdom and yes, strategy in, in the name yes. of Jesus. So we Jesus. how to move with Hallelujah. The movements uh, for our lives our ministry our family and even hey, those hallelujah jesus father may we be yes women lord. like the shulamite woman yes hallelujah. lord may we be able to give oh, out yes. what we have may yes we yes Bear out of the overflow mm. may the yes lord jesus Around us in the name, in of, the Jesus. name of Jesus. May we be a well watered garden. Yes. That people yes. 
power and understanding. May we be great counselors. And Father, yes. May we yes, Lord. Rahab, yes, Lord. where our past cannot hinder our future. Our future. Yes. Oh my God. No matter what the depth of depravity in our human eye that we Hallelujah. have. Thank you. Like Rahab, we are a part of the lineage of heaven. Yes. And that Amen. Is my God. In the Lamb's book of life. Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. The, 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 oh, she she was. Was. Hey, hallelujah. They tremble and they run. For hey, we know hallelujah. And we are persuaded that you are yes. able to keep all that which oh, we Jesus. have committed yes. over you against yes. us. Yes, Jesus. Holy God, hallelujah. Oh, we thank you. We hallelujah. thank you. Thank you. We bless your name, holy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Holy Jesus. Are you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah, Jesus. All Lord, these voices yes. joined together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yeah. Hallelujah, in solidarity with this oh, prayer. Hallelujah. Father, the 30, oh, God, the, the 60, the 100, oh God, may it flow in their lives tonight. Hallelujah. Jesus, we in your name, Jesus. Bless your name. Amen and amen. amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. 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 Am